It's a fun song. So today, at the beginning of worship, we had the incredible opportunity of lighting the candle of love. And indeed, what an expression the light of God is, the, the love of God through that light, the prophecy fulfilled of the hope of the nations, the peace that comes to the nations through that light, indeed the joy of the nations, all culminated in the love of God through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, during this time of Advent, we naturally talk a lot about our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the very fulfillment of God's promise throughout the millennia to send a Savior to a fallen world. And so during this time of Advent, and all times, of course, we recognize how the birth of this little baby boy there in this manger in Bethlehem is the very fulfillment of that prophecy. We also speak of God the Father's incredible love of mankind. Love so great that when we sinned and we destroyed his creation, he didn't leave us there in our corruption. It was God who took the initiative and did something about it. But sometimes during the time of Advent, it seems like at least our talking about God, the Holy Spirit, seems to get the short end of the stick, doesn't it? And yet, without question, the Holy Spirit of God has been with him from the creation right from our world's very beginnings. Think about it. In the beginning, God the Holy Spirit hovered over the nothingness. And yet, when God was finished creating, there was sun and moon and fish and fowl and humanity. And it was good. God was pleased and thoroughly loved this creation. But then this creation was spoiled with sin. And God was grieved. Not because he was now going to take vengeance and destroy this creation of his, but because God loves his creation. And so in this same love of God, God the Holy Spirit hovered over the womb of a virgin and brought forth once again, new creation in, with, and through his son, Jesus Christ. My friends, today on this fourth Sunday of Advent, our focus is on the mystery of what God has done for us. But we shouldn't be surprised. Neither should they some 2,000 years ago have been surprised either because Isaiah had told them exactly definitively. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel. That word means God with us. This first creation redeemed by this new creation. See, the virgin birth brought about through the same Holy Spirit who ho hovered over the waters of the first creation, overshadowed Mary, the mother of Jesus, and then brought about this new creation in her virgin womb. As I said, God wasn't trying to fix the broken creation of before. Indeed, he started fresh with a new Adam and a new race of people a new people. And so instead of fixing the old creation, God made a new creation. A fresh start, if you will. Our gospel reading this morning is familiar. In fact, I would say that the um, story is such a part of our Christmas lore that maybe, perhaps for some, it's even lost some of its significance or meaning. What do we focus on? Our focus is on Joseph, at least in this reading, who was led in a dream to accept Mary's pregnancy, even naming Mary's child. 
We see Joseph's kindness as well as his obedience. We know the story. We know the story so well that lost within our focus on Joseph is just how radical of an event this is. How radical. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Have you taken a look at a Christmas card lately? The stable is clean, and it usually has some sort of angelic glow about it. Mary hasn't even broken a sweat. The animals stand in perfect lines surrounding the young couple, and everyone is in awe of what has just taken place. Would you say that that is an accurate picture of a teenager giving birth for the first time in a stable without a doctor or a midwife or even her mom to help coach her through? Christmas tradition has romanticized the birth of Jesus by getting rid of the blood, the dirt, the stench, and the tears. In some ways, it's created a false portrayal of the birth of God's Son. The truth is, is that stables are dark, they're full of insects, and they stink. Mary has just traveled 70 miles on a donkey, and after a long, dusty, tiring journey, she discovers that there's no room in the inn, and she'll have to give birth in a stable. Do you think this is how Mary dreamed it would turn out when she found out that she was going to give birth to the Messiah? In our own lives, we often picture how God should use us, and a lot of times it looks like a Christmas card. When things don't go according to our plans or expectations, we assume that it must not have been God. But Mary's experience in the stable shows us that even in the most confusing, unfamiliar ways, God can be present and at work. In what ways is He working in your life right now? He looked at it from that perspective, the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ is indeed a radical event. The creator of all things, God in all of his glory and majesty, first of all comes into this world not as a powerful king, but as what? A little baby, helpless, born into a stinky manger. Talk about radical humility on behalf of his people. As I said, this is a new creation. It is no less wondrous than the creation recorded in Genesis. In fact, in the Greek text, when we read verse 18 of Jesus' birth, it literally talks about the, this is the Greek word here, the genesis of Jesus. The genesis of Jesus. Talking about the birth of Jesus. Like the Spirit hovering over the waters to begin the creation process, the Spirit again begins a creation process. The Spirit now creates something. No, not something. Someone in a totally miraculous way. The Virgin Mary... Becoming pregnant with Jesus is without question every bit as miraculous as when God created the earth and the heavens and everything in it. Now, can I explain all this to you? First of all, I don't have the intelligence to do it. Secondly, I don't have the time. But indeed, this is what we call the mystery of God. But it does make me think of some words that I've known for a long time by Albert Einstein. When Einstein said the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. And then, of course, our good friend, Dr. Martin Luther, the Wittenberg reformer. Luther says the mystery of the humanity of Christ, that he sunk himself into our flesh, is beyond all human understanding. Well, one thing we do know, the Old 
creation cannot bring forth the new. And no human being brought about this birth of Jesus Christ. This is God, again, speaking creation into existence. This time, God the Holy Spirit speaking His Word and resetting the universe. God the Holy Spirit speaks, and the Virgin Mary has conceived in her womb the very Savior of the world. God spoke His Word and brought forth life. And friends, let me tell you something. It's not the last time that God the Holy Spirit will do this. Not by a long shot. Take away anything from my message today. Take away this. Just as God the Holy Spirit spoke his word and the Virgin Mary was with child, the life of salvation, the life of the Savior within her, God did the exact same thing for each and every one of you in the waters of baptism. God does the same thing for you every time you hear and read his saving words in your heart. Every time you come to his table, every time you receive the Lord's Supper, and you hear these words, take, eat, this is the true body of Christ. Take and drink the true blood of Christ. When God speaks these words, he speaks your salvation into existence. How's that for radical? That is the love of God in the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of love. Having spoken our world into existence, having spoken our Savior into existence, and speaking our salvation into existence. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen and amen.